all started with Lalit Modi's proposal getting rejected by the BCCI to create a league like an ICL, where they would auction everything from team owners, rights of the television, and also the players of the team. Through some of the most ingenious political moves, Lalit Modi turned that rejection into a two-month entertainment extravaganza called the IPL. On the back of the T20 World Cup victory, the IPL started on a right note when Brendan McCallum blazed away to 158 to set the stage for the future. A business model revolving around entertainment that has yielded a whooping 433% returns since its existence up until now. IPL is by far the most lucrative T20 league valued at over $10.2 billion. And the next best is the 100 by ECB valued at $520 million. When Aidan Markram walked up to collect the Betaway SA20 2024 trophy on February 10th, it was only the location of the event that saved some confusion. Had it been Chennai, Ahmedabad or Mumbai, people could have easily taken the Sunrisers Eastern Cape for Sunrisers Hyderabad because of the similarity in the names. And of course, Markram, who was also the captain of the Indian franchise in 2023. However, people keeping close eyes on the business aspect of the game were aware, since Sunrisers was not the only name that sounded familiar in that league. In fact, all six teams in the South African league were sister club to the IPL sites. Sunrisers Eastern Cape, Durban Super Giants, Pal Royal, Joburg Super Kings, Pretoria Capitals and MI Cape Town. But is South Africa the only country dominated by the IPL franchises? Through teams like Dubai Capitals, Abu Dhabi Knight Riders, MI Emirates, and Barbados Royals, the IPL franchisees have grown their bases in the Caribbean, UAE, USA, etc. To be precise, 8 of the IPL's 10 franchisees own at least one team in another league abroad. In an interview with The Wisdom, Nicholas Brooks, who won the award for an Islands 11 The Story of Sri Lankan Cricket, said, Cricket might just follow football, and that the franchise T20 cricket is becoming the dominant format. More franchise cricket is also backed by the numbers, numbers like most 200 plus scores by teams across T20s, and only three international teams feature in the list. Some entertainment for the fans, isn't it? The number of franchise games are already on the rise with over 75% more games compared to the international T20s. If you were not happy enough with T20 cricket, the T10 cricket with Middle East influencer is on the surge too. International cricket will gradually decrease and franchise cricket will rise up the ranks. With this in mind, the IPL franchise owners already have an eye on the future. They don't want to miss out on any advantage that they might extract, and owning teams in different countries can just help them there. For example, football's Mumbai City FC Manchester City FC, Melbourne City FC are all owned by the same franchise. This enables a smooth flow when dealing with players, coaches, etc. Given football season lasts almost 10 months and a player mostly plays only in one or two leagues, it is not as tough there. In a recent interview of Dinesh Karthik in 2023, where he said that he had a great understanding with the owners of his previous club, Mumbai Indians, shows how this can transform into a multi-club relationship. Following football, not only do the IPL franchisees own a set of sister franchisees abroad, each of them have marquee players like Narayan and Russell playing for Knight Riders in all leagues abroad, including the IPL. Markram and Marco Jansen for Sunrisers, Tim David for Mumbai Indians, Devin Conway and Santner for Super Kings. In a report by Times London last year, IPL franchisees were convincing six English cricketers to opt out of the international cricket and pursue franchise leagues in a multi-million dollar deal. A lot of cricketers like Quentin Decock, who retired from Test and ODIs and is also going to retire from T20 internationals to focus on franchise cricket. A lot of West Indies cricketers have been following this route too, where they prefer playing for a franchise over their own nation. This can have several advantages from sponsorship to revenue, ads and a lot more. 
All of this will lead to each franchise operating itself as a corporate company. And one of the major benefits would be that they would be able to offer multi-tournament contracts to players. This has already started happening, although on a small scale. In a very recent turn of events, South Africa held back their best players to play in SA20 over Test cricket. And that not only meant harsh reactions from all over the globe, but also vital Test championship points. But SA20 was the flag bearer for South Africa in terms of being the best source of revenue that would stabilize domestic and international cricket in the nation. It is also coupled by a lot of nations like Zimbabwe, Bangladesh and a lot of mid and lower ranked teams losing interest in Test and ODI cricket. ICC having T20 World Cup every two years and the revenue earned by the board from playing an ICC event could also be a reason behind mid and lower nations losing interest in other forms of cricket. About $200,000 is what Bangladesh will be earning from playing this year T20 World Cup, compared to loss-making test series that hardly receive any audience retention and big sponsorship. But why IPL franchises? BCCI is the richest governing body valued at over $2 billion. Last year's winner CSK received 20 crores INR, while Bangladesh Premier League winners got 1.5 crore and Big Bash winners got 2.75 crores. If you talk about revenues, tournaments backed by IPL franchisees like Major League Cricket are already growing at the rate of more than 100%, currently making over $8 million in revenue. ILT20, another league that makes in excess of $15 million, SAT20 league that makes over $10 million. For short tournaments that last over three weeks, to grow at over 100% and already compete with leagues like BPL, Big Bash and PSL with its existence for over 10 years is astonishing and another reason why IPL franchisees could own a major share of franchisee cricket. In an interview with ESPN Crick Info, David Vise had recently stated that without proper structuring, no or small sponsors, the T20 leagues around the world like GT20 Hong Kong Blitz will hardly survive. Most of the leagues are dumped already. The revenue of over 500 crores INR for each team and fan following of Indian franchisees are way higher than any other countries. And that gives them the luxury. One great example is Royal Challengers Bangalore, who don't yet own a T20 team abroad but have a social media following that is only second to Real Madrid and are also valued at over $100 million. But there's a problem to the part that franchisees are following, and that is Indian players' participation in other franchise tournaments. The BCCI as well did object the move of franchisees moving abroad. But one way to look at it is that IPL will be at helm and will gradually turn into a four-month-long tournament with two groups with nine teams playing each other twice, with the teams in the same group, both home and away, and once with the teams in other groups. A team currently can play 16 to 17 games in two and a half months based on them making into the final, but with an increase in teams, they will go on to play a minimum of 25 to 28 games in a three to four month period. The BCCI feels that it makes the IPL more popular and a money-making industry and leagues abroad such as CPL, Major League Cricket, ILT20 can go in the remaining 2-3 to three months of time. This would mean Test Cricket to be played for about 4-5 to five months in a year, ODIs only in the form of World Cup and Champions Trophy that happens in every 4 and 2 years of time. T20s have so caught the eye that even the Test Cricket, the pinnacle of the sport, has been constructed into a championship model known as the World Test Championship. BCCI has also gone ahead and launched a WPL for women, an IPL-like model based on T20 cricket. To top it all, in recent times, BCCI has had a majority when it comes to the board of directors voting list at the ICC, 
It can be seen with how India is about to host three of the eight upcoming global events. And also the revenue India gets from the ICC, which accounts for almost 40% of the total revenue. Keeping that in mind and where the cricket is heading, franchisees might have hit the spot with owning teams in leagues abroad. But the problem here is all upon ICC. And the influence of Indian cricket on ICC can only lead to IPL franchisees dominating the T20 cricket. What do you think on franchise cricket? IPL franchises and where cricket is heading.